What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to another Football Manager 2018 Top 5. Today I'm going to be going through the top 5 teams to manage in England. In my opinion, of course, these are just some of my personal picks. Uh, I've picked one team from each division ascending from the Vanarama National. Hopefully you enjoy. If you do, leave a like and without further ado... So the first team here in this countdown is a slightly unusual one. I'm sure lots of people are expecting Leighton Orium, and I've picked out Tranmere Rovers as a team for you to consider managing. They're a team that tumbled out of the Football League with back-to-back -back relegations and were expected to bounce back immediately at the first time of asking. But as anyone who follows a Vanarama national team uh, will let you know, that is not an easy task. There is only one automatic promotion spot in this league, and it's fiercely contested. And well, after coming so close last year and finishing second to Lincoln City, Tranmere are now in a situation where they need you to get them out of this league ASAP. However, there's a problem, and the problem comes in the form of the two teams relegated. Both Hartlepool United here, a very, very strong team indeed, and also Leighton Orient uh, have basically joined you in this division, and it's going to be fiercely competitive with these two sides to really, you know, find that automatic promotion spot. Now, the league has seen a slightly revamped playoff system that does mean that it's a little bit more generous, and a top seven finish will get you a playoff uh, spot, and it's worth noting that those are the expectations for the season. So, expectations should be easy enough to achieve, but realistically, the fans, they're going to want to see you get back into the Football League. Your transfer budget and wage budget are somewhat generous for the division. You have 3.3,000 pounds a week in wages and thirty thousand pounds a week in a transfer budget so there's some a little bit of money to wiggle around with then and really the big expectations of your team they're going to be on the new kid on the block jack dunn uh, formerly of liverpool and uh, well joining you here at Tranmere, and he, well he needs to be getting the goals he had a loan spell last year where he didn't shine that much although he only played three games and uh, well that now you need to see him performing big for you you can see a very good player for this division a player to really build a team around as well at the age of 22 but well if you can't get promoted at the first time of asking you're going to have a tough time keeping hold of this guy the second team here in this countdown are a team on the up, Lincoln City, a team that were really thrust into the limelight last year after they uh, had a hugely successful season. As you can see, they did win the Vanarama National League. And on top of that, they, of course, made a memorable FA Cup run where they lost to Arsenal ultimately in the quarter final. And now Lincoln really have the challenge of establishing themselves in the Football League. The board expectation is a League 2 mid-table finish, which I think is fairly attainable. There's been lots of new signings at Lincoln. The most notable probably is Michael Boswick, who is the star player here at the team. The former Stevenage and Peterborough man uh, has seen better days, but he's still an incredibly experienced and good uh, kind of centre-back or centre midfielder for you, who you can really build around. However, you have got seven new first-team players, and it is going to be difficult to try and get these players to gel. Within the social groups, there's a lot of new players. They are making up the main social group, but as you can see, the team is fairly divided into a few fairly big social groups. Your transfer budget is very, very good, however, at Lincoln. £160,000 a week. £3,000 wage budget is massive for this tier, and it certainly gives you room to bring in some new players. And another thing that's worth noting is due to the FA Cup run just last season... They have a very healthy overall balance of £2.25 million and you are realistically going to be able to get an increased transfer and wage budget over the course of the season if you choose to ask the board and uh, well, if you're performing well at the time. In terms of Lincoln as a challenge, I think the, the main objective really has got to be to cement them in the Football League. Uh, they're a team who I obviously follow and know a little bit about because uh, I am or was living in Lincoln for a long period of my life and there was a number of years where they were so close and as you can see, they actually finished in the playoffs like a number of years in a row and then narrowly missed out. Five years in a row they couldn't get promoted. Can you be the man to get them back into League One for the first time in this millennium? That's going to be the challenge. So number three in this countdown and my League One side to manage is Blackpool, a team who like Lincoln are newly promoted, but have a very different situation at hand. Of course, Carl Oyston, a very controversial man, is still the chairman at Blackpool at the time of recording this video. And, uh, well, despite scraping promotion back at the first time of asking to League One, Blackpool still are going to have a real challenge ahead of them. The expectation this season is a mid-table finish. Looking at the budget, there is a little bit of money to bring players in, but nothing to write home about. And really, you're going to have to make the most of the players you've got. You have got one star player, however, in Jay Spearing. 
And in fact, the centre of your midfield is really going to be where the core strength lies with this Blackpool side. Spearing is a very experienced player. You also have Sean Longstaff on loan from Newcastle, who is another star player in your squad. He only has an initial one-year loan. However, you can immediately extend this, as you can see here, to the end of next season. They'll accept it. So you have got this guy locked down for two years, potentially. And also, Jimmy Ryan deserves a mention. In these two, three centre midfielders, you've got three players you can really try and build a side around. Although, to try and fit them all into one team, you may have to compromise another area of the pitch. There's no young star youngsters, unfortunately, at Blackpool either, so you're very much going to have to work uh, with what you've got. But you've got an OK squad. As I said, the expectation is a mid-table finish. If we look at Blackpool here uh, and their general info, you can see they are predicted to finish 18th. So you are going to be trying to maybe just achieve a slightly better than the media predict you to do. It's going to be tricky, I think, to establish yourselves back in League One. However, with Blackpool, I think the long term aim really has got to be to try and get back to the Premier League like they were as recently as 2010 and 11. Can you kind of use the spark of a resurgence that appeared last year to march them back up the Football League? Coming in at number two in my top five teams to manage in England countdown, we have Brentford, a club punching above their weight who have now established themselves as a championship side and need you as a manager to take them to the next level. They do have a back-end sugar daddy who should ensure that you can continue to strengthen your squad to remain competitive in the championship and the season expectations for your first year are a top half finish which is actually fairly ambitious when you consider the media prediction is a 16th place finish. However, in Brentford, they've got three very exciting young players. You've got Neil Mopai, very kind of experienced at this point French player who's been around a fair while, had a varying degrees of success within France, has made the move over to the championship. And, uh, well, I think he is a very good potential championship and maybe even Premier League striker going forward. Alongside him, a few other players, Ollie Watkins, a very creative player, 21 years old, exciting player fast player good at this level of football and last but not, but certainly not least we have Rico Henry here of course the left back a player who was featured in my best defender shortlist really rate this guy in football manager really good physicals but it might be tricky just trying to keep hold of this guy. Another thing that's worth noting with Brentford is they are a team who kind of have stormed up the leagues with their chairman's backing, but really lack the infrastructure of a championship club. They have no youth recruitment. They have new, no junior coaching. Their under-18 side is looking very barren. And so as well as trying to get to the Premier League, I think another important element of your time here in charge at Brentford is really going to be about establishing an infrastructure which is going to be sustainable in the long term going forward. It's going to be very difficult to match the past few finishes in the championships where as you can see they finished as high as uh, fifth a few years ago and then followed that up with ninth and tenth place finishes however in Brentford you've got a real project some exciting young players a chairman who's going to back you to spend big in the transfer budget in order to establish yourselves at the champ championship level and hopefully if you can bring in the right players you can make that final push into the Premier League. And finally, at number one in this countdown, a slightly more predictable team than Brentford, where I'm imagining lots of people thought I was going to say the likes of Wolves, Aston Villa or Middlesbrough. We have in the Premier League Tottenham Hotspur, a team with an English core in Harry Kane, Eric Dyer, and Deli Alley, uh, who you can really build a new dynasty around. Of course, a team on the up finished second last year. Some real potential in this Tottenham Hotspur side. And it's just down to you to unlock it all and hopefully keep hold of your best players. As I said, Harry Kane, Eric Dyer, and Deli Alley, all players of the age of 23 or younger, you can build the next 10 years of this club around them. The board expectations are fairly high, uh, although actually it's only a top six finish for the first season. I feel like Champions League football is not beyond the reach, uh, personally, of Tottenham Hotspur. As you can see, Football Manager thinks they're going to finish sixth, but they do have a very good squad indeed. In terms of your finances, it's a very healthy initial transfer budget of £65 million, a wage budget of £151,000 as well. Uh, and the, really the challenge, I think, is going to be to keep hold of players, of course. Another thing that's worth noting with Tottenham is you are going to be playing at Wembley this season. If we look at the facilities, that brand new stadium, new White Hart Lane, you're going to be able to move into at the end of your first season in charge. And perhaps that new stadium can mark the start of a new dynasty that you can build at this football club. A very strong team, a team that should be challenging immediately for top four football. And, well, certainly within the first two or three seasons, the title as well. I'd be interested to know if anyone is going to be managing them, because I think they are going to be a very popular pick this year in Football Manager. Anyway, guys, that does wrap up this countdown from me. Hopefully, you did enjoy. Check out the links on screen playlist to a few other Football Manager 2018 series you may be interested in. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here. And other than that, it is me, Jack, 
and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.